Good day. Welcome to the course ECS 2605. In this course, we are going to help you to understand the South African financial system and all the different components that it consists of. I am Cecilia van Stijl and I've been involved with this course for more than 20 years. I'm going to be your module leader for this semester. Okay, hello. My name is Odile Mackage and I'm new to the Economics Department. I look forward to working you, with you on this course, ECS 2605. Odile, will you also tell the students about the e-tutors? Yeah, sure. Each of you will be appointed an e-tutor which will facilitate your learning on your My Unisa site. We recommend that you build a strong relationship with your e-tutor as they will be your first point of academic reference for this course. Right. And this... Um series of video clips, we are first just going to introduce you to the most important concepts that you're going to get across in this course. Now, the first two important concepts that we will cover are surplus economic units and deficit economic units. Now, an economic unit can be an individual, it can be a household, or it can be a business of any size, a one-person business, a small hawker, or a huge corporation that is listed on the Joburg Stock Exchange. When an economic unit has a surplus, a financial surplus, that means that the income of that economic unit exceeds the expenditure, and that it has savings available that it wants to do something with. When an economic unit is experiencing a financial deficit, that means the expenditure exceeds the income and it has to obtain funding somewhere to finance that deficit. Right. Now, a very important function of the financial sector is to facilitate the flow of funds from surplus units to deficit units. So an important function of the financial sector is channeling funds from surplus economic units to deficit economic units. We're going to write the functions of the financial sector with the blue pen. Right. Now, if you look at the surplus economic units, there will be many units with a deficit, but many of those economic units will have a small deficit. So those savings have to be pooled in order to facilitate the financing of the deficit units because sometimes the deficit units will have a huge deficit. It can be maybe a mining company that wants to erect a mine shaft, so it will need a huge amount of funds. And therefore, it is necessary to pool the savings of all the surplus units together. And that's another important function of the financial sector. Then the deficit economic units, there will also be many of them, many more than, that, than which can actually obtain funding in the economy. So therefore it's necessary to have methods available to make sure that these funds are allocated in the most efficient manner so that the deficit units who can use these funds in the most efficient way will actually obtain the funds. So that's another important function of the financial sector is the efficient allocation of the funds in the economic system. Efficient allocation of funds. Right, now there are several types of financial institutions that facilitate the channeling of funds and the other functions of the financial system. Now, Adil is going to tell you about all these different financial institutions that we cover in this course in the next video clip.